Hi, everyone. So this is the release video for software version 195 for EOS, Ion, and Element. Um, the big feature in this software release is called Virtual Media Server, aka pixel bitmapping. We're actually going to cover that function in part two of this video um, because it takes quite a bit of time, relatively speaking, to show it. Um, there are a number of other features in 195 that you should be aware of. The first, then, would be we've made some changes to timing. Um, there is a new setup option that allows you to toggle the queue list in the playback status display to show dynamic countdown for FCB timing, including delays. When you turn that feature on, then, the time button can be used to show you the static timing that's recorded with the queue. When that feature is disabled, which is the default, by the way, you get static timing in your queue list but you can use the time button to show dynamic timing if you'd like to see it. The use of this feature is largely going to be designer driven. It's going to depend on the way the designer wants to see the data for the most part. The other timing change is we've returned the time slash function from our legacy consoles to facilitate primarily changing just the intensity up fade time of a queue. But here's a quick demo of those two features. Let's take a look at PSD or playback status display time countdown. So the way we've done this, the way the console currently functions, is when you hit go on a queue, you'll see the time counting down and the percentage, and the time on the queue itself up here in the queue list is static. So when I hit go again, if I want to know what the countdown is, I can hold down time, and you'll see the countdown occurring. If I want to toggle that so that it stays that way and continues to count down, I can come here to displays, setup, desk settings, the display is on the touch screen, and now you'll see the PSD time countdown. We'll click that to enable. Come back to live, and now when I hit go, you'll see the countdown occur in the queue itself. Holding down time toggles back the opposite way now. In addition to that small change, we've also added in, for you Obsession users, time slash. So in this Q3, if I want to go time three. Currently we would go time eight, or I can now go time three slash eight and then enter, and we'll get a split fade time. So either option works. Uh, for those of you who have been using time time, you can continue, and for those who are more comfortable with time slash, you now have that as an option. Another reason for the time slash addition is when you're working with a multi-parameter device, we now have the ability to separate out and only change the intensity upfade time very easily. Right now, on our Q11 here, which has a, a moving light attached to it, if I do time 8, enter, you'll notice that all of our times change, and you'll notice that focus color beam have all changed. If really what I wanted to do was simply change the upfade time, I can now do time 5, slash, slash, enter, and I get 5 up and the other times stay the same. So it really depends on uh, how you want to interact with time and what influence you want to have. And that's taking a look at some of the new time options. Okay, so the next feature to talk about would be a new patch function called GM Exempt Channels. Um, you could think of those as the old independent function from our legacy desks, but we couldn't call it independent because we use that word someplace else. Um, when a channel is set to GM Exempt, the intensity parameter of that channel, for all intents and purposes, is treated like a non-intensity parameter. So it won't respond to blackout, grandmaster, go to Q0, and remdem controls. And this is a quick demo of how to set up and use GM exempt channels. And now let's look at how to set a GM exempt channel. Come to displays and soft key patch. In this case, we're going to select channel 45. Under Attributes on the soft keys, there's a new button called GM Exempt, so we select it. In our patch display, there's a column called GM. It'll show us the flag that it's been marked as exempt. We come into Live. If I set channel 45 to full, or set it to A level, if I do a go to Q0, you'll now see that channel 45 is in a light gray meaning that it was exempted or acting as an independent. The GM exempt will be used when you use the Grandmaster, Blackout, Rim Dim, 
and a go to queue zero. Uh, go to queue out will send it to zero. So the others, just as a quick review, are Grandmaster, Blackout, RimDim, and go to queue zero will not impact a GM exempted channel. So the last feature that we're going to demo in this portion is a new condition that we've added for submasters called shielded. When you look at the attributes of a submaster, the independent flag has now been removed and replaced with a soft key called priority. There are now three priorities that can be placed on any submaster. One is priority none, the second is priority independent, and the third then is priority shielded. When you shield a submaster, two things happen. The contributions of that submaster will not be stored into any record targets that you store. You also can't take manual control over any channels that are controlled by a shielded submaster. Um, you can sort of think of this like a live park function. You might want to use this for things like house lights, work lights, hazers, things that you need to have dynamic control over, but that you don't want to grab control over by mistake, nor do you ever want to have stored into your queues. And here's a quick demo on how to use shielded subs. Let's take a look at shielded submasters. We have two submasters recorded, which are 18 to 22 and 35 to 39. We set them in the sublist display, which we get to by doing tapping the submaster button twice. So we do sub sub. I'm currently looking at sub two. Up here under soft keys, we have the exclusive button. So we select that and hit enter, and we set exclusive flag. And then under more soft keys, in order to bring the priority button down, we select priority. Uh, I actually want to do that under sub one in order to show the difference. The priority is a toggle button, so it has a couple of different states. We have independent, shielded, and no priority. So we're going to select shielded and then hit enter. So now we have sub one is priority shielded and exclusive, and sub two is just exclusive. Come back to live. I'm going to set the two subs at different levels. We'll set a couple of couple of different channels at a level, and we're going to record a queue. We recorded the queue. We're now in queue 21, just a random number. And then you'll notice that as I pull the subs up and down, they are, those channels are not recorded in. If I now select a range of channels that also includes our subs, you'll notice that the shielded subs are not set in a manual way. They are excluded from manual control. There are a number of other features in 195 that will be referenced in both the supplement and the release note that you should check out. Some of them include a new state for playback controls for your cue lists. Um, in previous software builds, you had two conditions that you could place on your faders. One was proportional control and the other was I master control. We've now added a third condition called manual master. When you put a queue list into that mode, the action of the faders from full to zero triggers the queue and from zero to full triggers the next queue. So you can basically run queues manually without having to use the go button. We've added um, a flexi encoder state and when you put the encoders into that mode, when you have channels selected, rather than leaving empty spaces for parameters that are not appropriate for that channel, we actually compress them. You'll find that very useful when you're working with media servers specifically. We've now also added the ability for non-standard LED fixtures, such as um, RGBA, RGBW, to have the additional parameters controlled via the color picker and the gel picker, which was not possible prior to 195. There are a number of other features that you should check out, as always. Please remember that there is a part two to this video, which explains the virtual media server control. And as always, you can find us on the forums if you have any questions about the new software. Thanks.